Hey, look, we're going to go see a comedy show. It's called The Nasty Show. What would you expect to see? It's a comedy show. What kind of show would it be? Here's hell for you. What kind of show? Here's health. To health? Yes. A healthy show. Wait, a nasty show? Wait, wait. A nasty show? <laughs> That'd be a funny show. All right, comedian Bobby Slayton, the pit bull of comedy, is back in Montreal Friday for his first show here in years. It's called Bobby Slayton's Back, Nastier Than Ever. You need to come to the nasty show. There's not a goddamn thing to do in Montreal if I am not in town. What are you going to go do? Go by the college? Watch those asshole colleges? Bag of pots and pans? What? What are you looking at, huh? Want to go see Bob Saget's show? Is that what you need? XXX? Come to the original XXX show. It's dirty. It's fun. It's horrible. It's disgusting. It's not for the faint of heart. It's what Montreal is all about. A tout de love. It'd be at uh, Le Nivium, that's the uh, ninth floor of the Montreal Eaton Center, the beautiful venue that's uh, reopened, uh, starting at 7 o'clock. And uh, Bobby Slayton's on the line. Bobby! Bobby! So I just remember, we're, keep it clean, we're on live. Okay? Yeah, that's Andrew? right. Yeah, this is not the nasty show, okay? Right. And by the way, you still have that beautiful radio voice, you know. Uh, oh, God bless Unlike you. me, yeah. who is, you know. By the way, it's funny, I, I just had another note. You know, I've been doing a lot of radio commercials. I really don't do much stand-up anymore. What? And the people that use me, it's just because my voice just doesn't... I don't know. I don't know why it's... You know, I was actually once... Going to be the voice of the Pink Panther. They were going to remember the Pink Panther cartoon. Yeah, you're kidding, really? Okay, and there's a great story. I know we don't have a lot of time. I want no, to talk about the nasty show all the time. But, um, um, but you know, the, the the Pink Panther. You know, you always expect him to be like a David Niven, yeah, a very a exactly. swab, You know, uh, Pepe Le Pew. Right. So they looked at every voice actor between New York and Los Angeles, and they couldn't find the right person. And then my manager calls up. What about Bobby Slayton? And they said, Bobby Slayton's the last voice. They could ever be the Pink Panther. And I got the part because it was exactly the last voice you would expect to come out of the Pink Panther. Really? Um, so what was so what so, went, so maybe maybe they made a mistake. So was know, it whatever. your so was it your your would we recognize you as as the Pink Panther or was it were you putting on a voice? No, no. I, this is my voice. This is so you voice were just so you were just hello. I'm the Pink Panther. <laughs> But, but pretty much, yeah. It was a little bit more complicated than just that. But yeah, it's pretty much alone in the Big Panther. So anyway, so the nasty show. Yes, you yeah. know. Uh, well, first of all, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a second. I retired from doing stand up. I really haven't been doing it for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years. And when Andy Noman called me, you know, I guess because you know, just for laughs had gotten canceled the festival, and he said, you know, besides a few comedy clubs, we really don't have a lot of comedy going on in July. In um, in Montreal, you want to come up and ask, well, I don't know, you know, it's, he had this beautiful venue, um, I don't know if you've been up there, but it's beautiful, like 400 seats, and I said, you know, I don't know if I could sell 400 tickets, because the Nasty Show was very popular, but I never thought it was because of me, I mean, you, you've been to it, the lineup of comics we had over the years, between Louis C.K. and Joe Rogan, and C.M. Vidal, and Lenny Clark, and Gilbert Gottfried, it went on and on and on, so I think people were coming to see the Nasty Show as a whole, so for me to be a one-man nasty show was a big responsibility, especially because I haven't been doing stand-up for seven years. So I have not slept in two months trying to get over this. And <laughs> everybody says to me, oh, it's like riding a bicycle once you get back on. Yeah, well, let me tell you something, Andrew. The last time I was on a bicycle, I almost killed myself. So that's not a good analogy. Okay, um, so, so Bobby, I, 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 I have no worries about uh, how, how good you're going to be. And I think that you've had enough goodwill in the city over the years that you'll be able to pack that place. But I'm, I'm curious about your, your, your voice work. Like I had no idea that you were a voice actor. What what do you what are what what commercials what radio commercials do you do? Well, right now I have an exclusive contract. I guess they don't play them up in Canada, but I I work for Skechers. I'm like the voice of Skechers. Oh yeah, and um, it's funny they just signed you know Mr. Montreal, Mr. Canada, Howie Mandel to do TV commercials. So me and Howie did something together uh, the other day. You know, Howie was an investor in Just for Laughs. Yeah. Um, and we just left going under. He probably needs to work now. So thank God. <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for Howie. Um, you know what I do? I, I did a lot of commercials over the years, uh, but really corporate, serious. I mean, I was a polar bear for a McDonald's commercial. And then I was a polar bear, an animated guy. Uh, and then again, I was a polar bear, polar bear for, for Kmart years later. I wouldn't think I'd be two animated polar bears for two separate companies. But I guess that was... And I got typecast like Gilligan because I haven't got any work as a polar bear since. Oh, no. 
So, yeah, I know. So what do you enjoy? What do you enjoy more? I mean, I guess the fact that you're you're semi retired from comedy answers my question. But what do you enjoy more? Is it the is it the stand up in front of the live crowd or is it the performance of the well, of the look, voice? I got acting? really tired of stand up. You know, I mean, I see people like Bill Maher and Jerry Seinfeld who, you know, have untold billions of dollars, yeah. but they still enjoy doing it. Then again, they also fly in private jets and have their own floor <laughs> at Caesar's Palace um, and make a fortune. You know, they make as much in a minute as I was making in, in, in a year. But um, so I guess if you make that kind of dough, stand-up was fine. But I was playing the comedy clubs, and it was getting, you know, traveling all the time, hoping for my first-class upgrade, you know, yeah. and getting my upgrade at the Holiday Inn Express in some horrible town where there's nothing to eat except a Taco Bell across the street. You know, so... I got tired and burnt out of stand-up, and as you probably know, things have changed so much. I don't know if you want to call it the woke culture, politically correct, you know, yeah, yeah. but you get a lot of these young idiots that, uh, you know, want to change the world, these white, guilty, liberal, whatever you want to call these kids. So it was tough for me to do stand-up and play the clubs in some of these cities, and I, I just got tired of it. I got burnt out, so when you ask me what I like more, I, you know, it, it's just a whole idea, like, you know... Like I would always do morning radio like this. You know, I'm in L.A. now. It's 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 5 oh, a.m. in L.A. Wow. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I used to be up at this. I used to be up till this time of day. Now yeah. I usually get now I'm an old Jew, so I get up this time of day. <laughs> so doing do your show is fine. You know. Um, so yeah, I get tired of stand up, but I like doing the voiceover stuff. Um, and I mostly work for sketches. You know, the last time I went in to read for a radio commercial, um, somebody was telling me. We're looking for a Bobby Slayton type. And I said, wait, Bob, I'm still alive. I'm here. We're looking <laughs> you for a Bobby Slayton. You don't need a Bobby Slayton type. So, um, yeah, anyway, I got tired of stand up. I'm looking forward to doing this show, but I'd be very nervous. My, the bottom line is, Andrew, I don't really feel that nasty anymore. So when they build it and I okayed it, and then on the second book, nastier than ever, I said, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm more crankier than ever. Crank, can you put crankier than ever? And Nolman said, "Cranky doesn't sell; nasty sells." So you know. Well, um, looking for looking forward to it. I mean, uh, well, let me tell you something else. I didn't have to do your show and get up. The show is sold out. And they said, what? "Do one show. Do, do Andrew's show because he's a fan and he, you know, he's been a big supporter." And I said, "Sure, why not?" You know. Oh, it's sold um, out already. It's sold out. Yeah, I don't need to do this show. Wow. There's no reason for me to get up and do this. Wow. I, I I'm in, I'm really impressed now. I hope so. Like I really I hope. So. <laughs> you know. Um, that's the other thing too, because when I was on the road doing stand up, there was always morning radio to sell tickets. Yeah. I didn't have that luxury of going, well, you know, I'd like to get up and do, you know, whatever station, but, um, you know, and I, you know, when I used to do the nasty show, I would come in a day early so I could, you know, do Terry DeMonte's show yeah, yeah. and do, uh, the morning news and do all that stuff. Cause you can't do two, three shows at night, go to bed one, two in the morning. And then get up and do radio, you know. Well, that, Bob, Bobby, tell, a couple of days tell me. That'll wear you down. Tell me something. Are you? Is there a chance you'll uh, you'll add a second show? Are we? We were about to add a second show. We just didn't have enough time okay. to promote it. Okay. You know. Um, um, yeah, we didn't have time to promote it. And, and to be honest with you, I'm coming with my girlfriend. I want to go out to eat. I'm I'm, I'm happy just to do a bunch <laughs> show and get this over with. Um, but you know, I. By the way. And it's not just me, it's Derek Sagan, you know, who's a big oh, yeah, of favorite. Course. Sure, I love Derek. I wanted somebody, and he hosted the Nasty Show a few times, and yeah. he appeared on it a few other times. I wanted somebody local that was great to open up the show. And then I thought, God, what if he really does great? And now I'm going to have it, it's going to be hard to follow him. That, that's the other thing when you do stand up. You, you want somebody good opening. But yeah, but not too really good. Kill, yeah. It makes it harder. Yeah. And if they bomb, it makes it even harder than that. Right. So I thought Derek would just get up and rock that room and. Um, and then we'll see what happens. So and it's up to me. So many worries. So many worries. I, well, yeah, it's, I'm an old Jew now. I worry. That's what I do. It's it's a pleasure to speak with you again. I'm glad you're doing well, and we're looking forward to seeing you. You take well, care. I'm coming in today, and I can't wait to get up there and, and go to some of my favorite restaurants, Tavern and Moishas. And nice. Dama. And I, I love all those joints, so it'll be fun. You take care. Thank all you. All right, pal. Good talking okay. to you. Good talking to you.